This is Donald Trump, a popular American presidential candidate. And this is Donald Trump's penis, a small glandular organ at the base of his pelvis. There's a certain compensation thing going on, many would say. He's an out-and-out -out narcissist, others have added. In fact, dubbing Trump a narcissist has become something of a cottage industry in modern America, with multiple US publications lining up to suggest he's suffering from something called narcissistic personality disorder. We are going to make America so great again, maybe greater than ever before. And they do seem suddenly everywhere beyond Trump's towering cockery. Narcissism itself has become something of a cottage industry. In a world increasingly colored through the Nashville yellows of an Instagram filter, it's our new pop psych magic wand, a label that has replaced psychopath as the thing we now dub everyone, from Kanye to our moody ex or needy mom. All of which is a far cry from the ancient Greek myth of Narcissus, who drowned after falling in love with his own reflection, or even from Sigmund Freud's invention of narcissism as an illness a hundred years ago. I'm about to wade into this cultural clusterfuck to see if I can figure out where actual narcissism begins and just being a bit of a dick ends. I'll be seeking out real-world narcissists and their victims, talking to the new breed of experts, in short, holding up a mirror to narcissism itself. And given the nature of the disorder, that's probably the most dangerous thing you can do to it. A quick Google suggested they didn't seem to hold their own barn dances or rent themselves out for children's parties, so I began to look for a proxy. Beautifulpeople.com is a dating site that only accepts one in five applicants, solely on the basis of their hotness. Would this be the place to find the well-varnished exterior of a narcissist? So what are we going to do today? Um, we're going to sign you up to beautifulpeople.com. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you'll get through. If I wanted to sign up though, first I'd have to leverage my own genetic bursary and given that most of my ancestors were spoon-faced Irish hobbit folk, there were still a few hurdles. Are you a member of the Beautiful People? I am, yeah, I got mm -hmm. in. Did you? Yeah, two day voting process, I got in, positive votes. Mm. Would you wow. say some of these people are narcissistic? There's an element of narcissism Just, in everyone. Yeah, I mean, what sort of photo do you think would work for someone like me? Do you want to sign up now? Yeah, sign me up. Yeah, have you got photos? I mean, there are access? photos on the electric internet that yeah. we could access. Okay, that's, wait, 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 that's scary, <laughs> that's scary. If, I, if, I, if I'm honest, I don't think that's going to get through. Right. <laughs> This is the best of a bad bunch of photos. Okay, so I need to add some text. You need to add some description. Yeah. I'm looking for a uh, love coupled with sexual intercourse. At least Not you're necessarily honest. in that order. And do they have success on here? Do you have many? You we've know, got. We've had, lots of, the... we've had lots of beautiful marriages. We've had over a thousand marriages and babies. babies. Do you worry you're creating some kind of Aryan master race? <laughs> Uh, I, th I think that's kind of what people are looking to do anyway when they walk into yeah. a bar or walking down the street. Look, this is, okay. Oh, honey, you're currently uh -oh. being voted out. Uh-oh. Okay, we can swing this if I think if we t tweak your profile a bit. Emergency measures. The public verdict stung way more than I'd imagined. Can you smile? Mm, can I, though? <laughs> Try. I did wonder whether this would be the trigger for my circling the narcissistic plug hole, the opening act of a new life of burpees, of skin peels and joylessly mechanical sex. Oh! You've had a huge turnaround. Really? Check. That's an enormous turnaround. That's amazing. That's the biggest turnaround in history. That's wow, I, I should be paid for this. Does that mean I'm really, really, really hot? You're getting, you're getting better votes than me. I know. Within two days you'll get an email saying whether you've been accepted or rejected. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your help in uh, making a new beautiful man of me, Flick. Pleasure. Uh, Good uh, luck. Oh, uh, uh. oh, I'd definitely vote you in. i double thumbs you in a non-sexual way. So maybe I was hot after all. I like that. But did I like it enough to be pathologically narcissistic?
It was all still very confusing. To get a clearer breakdown on the topic, I went to see Philippa Perry. Hi, Gavin. Hi, come Hi. on. Hi, a well known psychotherapist and author of How to Stay Sane. What does a narcissist's bathroom look like? Is it just one big mirror? Could be one big mirror, yeah. couldn't it? So, a narcissist's bathroom will try and make you think of a certain way. I'm trying to control the way you see me by what you see in the bathroom. Extraordinary. And, and a normal and person wouldn't care what impression their bathroom made, but a narcissist would. Well, the bathroom was certainly a nice touch. More usefully, she'd offered to run me through a few narcissism diagnosis questions, as used by psychologists. Do people often fail to appreciate your very special talents or accomplishments? Of course. They do? Yeah. Tick. Have people told you that you have a too high opinion of yourself? Mm, from time to time. How often are we talking here? Just have they, yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, OK. When you have a problem, do you always insist on seeing the top person? No, I'm happy with mediocrity. Do you expect people to do what you ask with that question because of who you are? Oh, uh, well, because of what I tell them, but not because of who I am. So you do? Put me down as a maybe. <laughs> Do you feel you deserve special treatment? No, not in airport lounges. OK, let's see how you're doing. You're still not a narcissist. <laughs> you're like right. the rest of us, you're on the scale. What is a narcissist? What is a narcissist? Well, we all have various narcissistic traits, but you have to have an awful lot of them before you're defined as a narcissist per se. Now, what are the traits? You think you're extraordinary, you think you're unique. Grandiosity, arrogant you manipulate other people to your, for your own ends. And that leads into a lack of empathy, excessive need of admiration from others, and very controlling about how others see you. So there's about nine traits, and in order to be diagnosed as a narcissist, you need five of them. So if you've just got one or two of them, you won't be diagnosed as having narcissistic personality disorder. You need some sort of self-belief in order to get out of bed in the morning. You know, I believe I can do my job. But it's when you think that only you could present this programme. No one else could do it. Yeah. Because you're super, super special. A narcissist's born or made? You do not choose to be a narcissist. Yeah. Narcissists are made. You put the child on a pedestal and you say he's great because he's got the family name, because he can recite Latin verse, um, because he does stuff. Not for who he is, not for just being, because he does stuff. Another way you can make a narcissist is that you can diss your child completely. You cannot give them any praise. You know, you don't light up when they come into the room. So that is very hurtful to the child. So they build up this shell of I'm the best in order not to feel the hurt. You have to have genes that predispose you to be a narcissist or a psychopath. But those genes require certain conditions in the environment in order to turn them on. She'd laid it all out neatly, but within psychiatry, narcissism remains a relatively new controversial phenomenon. It was only in 1994 that the term was first recognized by the DSM Psychiatric Handbook and it's only been three years since that definition was changed to include a list of nine key traits. Grandiosity. Preoccupation with success and power. A belief in being unique. A sense of entitlement to special treatment, requiring excessive admiration, being envious of others, lacking empathy, exploiting others to achieve personal gain, being arrogant and domineering. I had my list of traits, and beautifulpeople.com had finally turfed up a fellow Hottie McHotface called Dawn. So I wrote the bullet points down on my palm and headed out on my first ever beauty-based date. Hello Dawn, I'm Gavin. Hi, Gavin, Hi. Nice to meet you. How are you? Yeah, Nobody can wash our hands. Can I drug them here? It's possible. Yeah. Is this an unusual date for you? This would go be up there on, on fairly unusual dates, yeah. Uh-huh. Dawn didn't seem to like cats any more than I did. And yet again, I found myself cursing my date organizing technique of skimming through Time Out magazine. To salvage something, I decided to double down on the narcissist angle. Do you, do you think I'm hot? 
that's a bit blunt to go straight in there, isn't Just it? Just want to know if you think I'm hot. I think you have a certain charm. OK. Do you think there are more narcissists on a site like beautifulpeople.com? I think that it may attract people that have narcissistic tendencies in terms of looks, in terms of appearance, yeah. But then I would say that's all of us anyway. Well, I really don't want to date any more narcissists, but the problem is you never see those buggers coming. So where do you, where do you go to find out about narcissism? What's the... Oh, internet, of course. Yeah. There's an amazing guy who I absolutely love. He's What's called um, Richard Grannon. OK. And yeah. he does a project called The Spartan Life Coach, yeah. and the guy is amazing. Do you like YouTube videos? I'm into them, that's, yeah. That's a bit of a <laughs> wide-sweeping <laughs> question, isn't it, really? conversation, yeah. <laughs> It seemed that instead of finding the narcissist I was after, I'd drawn a girl who was as obsessed with narc hunting as I was. I decided not to share this irony with Dawn, but instead to check out the man she'd mentioned, Richard Grannon, a former martial arts expert turned narcissism guru. What narcissists do is they chip away at your sense of self and at the core of your sense of what is real and what's not. Your whole reality goes dark. Grannon had begun life as a bouncer on the Liverpool security scene. Gradually, his website about martial arts had mutated into him talking on YouTube about the mental aspects of self-defense. It's about looking at how you feel in the present moment, inside your body, here and now. This body, this moment. One day, he decided to talk about narcissism. His views spiked, then went off the charts. Now, victims of narcissistic abuse flocked to his channel. You've got 42,000 subscribers at the moment. In the last six months, it's grown exponentially. And I think the explosion of interest has come from people who have seen that there is actually now a way of describing abusive and exploitative patterns of behavior by extremely entitled and arrogant people um, that they found useful and empowering. So that's right. why they're using it. But how different is that to just really sucky relationships? This is a vice thing, so I can swear, can't I? Oh, yeah. yeah Go somebody, ahead. Somebody, <laughs> somebody being an asshole is not a personality disorder. If somebody's being an asshole consistently, every moment of the day, through multiple contexts and multiple scenarios, even when you're saying, please stop being an asshole, it hurts and you're ruining my life, that's a personality disorder. How does it manifest itself in our culture on a day to day basis? We've never seen technology like what. The, the scenario we're in right now. This little black mirror that we carry around in our pockets, the smartphones, that's all you. That's all about you and your preferences and the websites you want to look at. And we become insular, we become very intolerant of others. This is a personality disorder of broken boundaries. Mm. This is a personality disorder of entitlement. The technology that we carry with us and that we are uh, you know, consuming at record rates right now encourages entitlement and encourages a lack of respect of other people's boundaries. Mm. So we are all player one in the video game of our lives. Absolutely, that's a great way of putting it. <laughs> so, I mean, tell me about narcissists that you, that you meet in your work. Do they ever come to your courses? Yes, they do. There's actually another personality disorder called the inverted narcissist. And that is a person who has narcissistic personality disorder, but their narcissism manifests as an obsession with being narcissistically abused. Right. So it's. I mean, that's terrifying. That is I mean, utterly terrifying. It's also and it's, it's Hitchcockian. It is Hitchcockian. Hitchcock yeah. would love that. Grannon wasn't the only one who felt this world had a dab of the Hitchcocks. There were now dozens of YouTube gurus out there, each offering victims psychic pepper sprays, mental rape alarms, or emotional hand grenades. These people are dangerous. They're destructive. You start questioning your own reality. You start questioning your own self worth. This very self-contained online world was now so advanced it had developed its own long list of jargon. Words like gaslighting, where a narcissist manipulates someone into doubting their own sanity. Love bombing, where a narcissist uses irrational quantities of affection to manipulate someone's behavior. Or flying monkeys, the people narcissists use to attack their chief target. Back in IRL, the London Narcissistic Support Group offered victims a three-month course to rebuild their self-esteem after narcissistic relationships. So all of you, I assume, have had a sort of key relationship that's been really challenging and really difficult in your lives. They're probably a narcissist. Um, what I want you to do is think about um, a time where that relationship has been particularly difficult and write about that. Okay, so everyone wants to put their pens down. Um, how did you all find that? 
made me feel absolutely exhausted. Yeah. Writing it down. All I felt was this huge rage coming from him. How do I spot a narcissist? <laughs> They're really good at zoning in on what your particular vulnerability is. Because when you first meet them, they ask you so many mm. questions okay. about yourself, which is one of the reasons they seem so appealing. They seem so interested mm. in you. But it is the stages, isn't it? The first love bombing. Yes. You're love the best, you're the amazing really. person. And then, devalues. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah. What's part of the mind control? Because the love bombing period is then what you are constantly, for however many years, you're looking trying for. to get back. If I just do this, chasing the get back to that time. You're not used to dealing with somebody who will tell you in one breath, you are perfect for me. Yes. And, and then, then and then within a, a matter of half an hour, they will then say something which completely throws you. There's just something about the person that doesn't really add up. The stories were endless. The group were clearly delighted to have found others who spoke their language. And the trauma of the incidents it describes couldn't be denied. He was pushing me to kill myself because he would have got such a huge buzz from that. These people all seem to see narcissists as characters of self evil with stray tentacles slipping from their sleeves. But when I did find one, he was mainly human. Can anyone diagnose a narcissist? Can you diagnose your narcissist? An abusive His name was Sam Wagner. Physical abuse? Diagnosed as a clinical narcissist, really he did time in an Israeli jail for securities fraud. Since then, he's moved to Macedonia and bent his own condition into an online business as an expert on the subject. Not all abusers or jerks are narcissists, although all narcissists are abusers and jerks. Our Yet, as we corresponded over bringing him to the UK, I began to realise that his being self-aware definitely wasn't the same as saying he was cured. So we managed to track down an actual narcissist and already it seems the narcissistic abuse has begun over email and it spread to our production coordinator who received an email from uh, Mr. Sam Vartman saying, uh, I know it is none of my business and I apologise for butting in, but I simply cannot contain myself. I checked with Wizz Air and the cost of two flights is £160. I have no idea how you could possibly have ended up being charged £690. It sure looks like you're being overcharged egregiously. Additionally, it's just the, the sheer, I guess, the grandiosity and self centeredness of the fact that he's double starred this email. He's flagged it up as a super high priority with two exclamation marks. You know, someone's got a personality disorder when they start uh, double starring their, their emails as, as high priority. And uh, the grandiosity then continues in the last email I got from him. Modesty aside, Making a film about narcissism without my participation is like making a feature about the 2016 elections without mentioning Trump. Brackets laughing. After many more emails in which I was alternately sub and dom in this low wattage BDSM business battle, we finally got him to London. At the pub, I asked him to explain the roots of his condition. First time I was diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder in Canada, when my fiancé wisely broke up with me. Tell me a bit more about your prehistory with all of this. I mean, you, you were a child once. Were you aware that you were different in some unknowable way? Uh, I was a very disruptive kid at school and at home. And I was subject to seriously horrendous abuse. I mean... Really? Inside the home? Yeah, at home. It is the common perception today that narcissism is a, reac a reaction to prolonged, protracted and traumatic abuse in early childhood. And I had these in ample quantities. I was sent to this psychiatrist and he, he measured my IQ. And it was, at the time, 185, which is considered pretty rare. Yes. So at age nine, I was plucked out of elementary school and I was sent to university. So I had abuse at home I, I was an idol outside. So it messed up my mind, messed up yeah. my mind completely. And I believe my narcissism has developed as a reaction to all this. Did you have any friends as a child? No, was the... that's, no. that's an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could be a true friend to anyone in the sense that I don't think I will have an emotional correlate. If I become friends with you, there will always be the question of what's in it for me? How can I leverage you mm -hmm. to obtain certain goals? 
there always be com some kind of comeuppance. Like I would always try to compete with you and establish a hierarchy. It will be contaminated, a contaminated version of friendship. It's so contaminated that I sincerely doubt whether it complies with the definition. Sam seemed quite charming for a narcissist, but then, as he'd reminded me earlier, that was just another weapon deployed in the narc's endless social gamesmanship. Many others seemed to presuppose it, but did Sam think we were living through a golden age of narcissism? Is the trend line upwards for narcissists? I think we're at the tipping, at the tipping point. On the one hand, we will have pathological narcissism, diagnosable, treatable, and on the other hand, we will have socially condoned, accepted and encouraged type of narcissism, including values such as ambition and drive and ruthlessness and lack of empathy and so on. Mm. And these behavior patterns will be rewarded by society. Mm. So it will pay to be a narcissist. Crime pays, narcissism pays. And this is being fanned by social media? I think it's quite the, the opposite, actually. I think it was the rising wave of narcissism right. that led to the development of social media. Does that scare you or delight you that you may have many thousands more narcissistic brothers and sisters soon? Narcissists are absolutely the stuff horror movies are made of. They are ominous. They are self-destructive. They are self-defeating. You can't build anything solid on a narcissistic society and collective. And so you're essentially uncurable? All narcissists are essentially incurable. Yes. Mm. I'm being a narcissist, of course. I'm incurable. Ominous. The stuff horror movies are made of. It's easy to blame the narcissist, but meeting both Sam and the victims had given me a sense of the obvious codependency between the two. The more we crave their strength to balance our weakness, the more we salivate before the bell of their certainty, the more we lock our culture into narcissism's track lines. In an ever more atomized world, that hunger to belong becomes increasingly dangerous. Experts say social media doesn't create more narcissists, but it does give them an arena to flourish. Increasingly, these are the people we're giving the keys to the car, and they could easily drive us all off a cliff. At least the Greek narcissist only took himself down. Finally, beautiful people got back to me about my application. Okay, so my hotness has been up in the air for 48 hours. Unfortunately, uh, I got an email this morning with regret. The application was not successful. It goes on to suggest some reasons why my application might not have been successful, none of which apply to my photo, meaning that ugliness was the only valid criteria here. So, screw you guys. You sinister cabal of narcissists who won't let me join you. Can we have a recount? <laughs>